Let's just, let's just worship the Lord. Why don't you stand up as the pastor we pray? Heavenly Father, we know that there are some people who are unhappy with our gathering today. And we pray for them, Lord. We pray that they might know that their lives are in your hands. And we pray, Lord, that you use this as an opportunity to let our trust in you be into every nook and cranny of our hearts and minds and souls. In your son's name we pray. When the government said, hey, you can't meet anymore, um, that was a challenge because, you know, we don't have staff to run video cameras and handle the computers and figure out live streaming. And it was just a lot of learning uh, with no time and making a lot of public mistakes. And people see it, oh, that, that didn't turn out right, but yet it's already been online for a week. But, you know, God provided. It's just interesting how... Uh, it was stressful because you were being pushed to have to communicate the gospel in a way that is challenging when you're a small church in a small town. Um, but, but you know, the Lord gave us exactly what we needed. It was so cool seeing uh, volunteers appear to operate cameras and lights and mix down the music and the musicians are doing their very best for the Lord. And so it was neat to see how the Lord can take a tiny church, no resources, no staff, and yet he makes it all work together so that the gospel alone is really all you need. Jesus says, I'm Lord of all. And so I just kind of felt like this conflict of personally about um, who determines how, when, where, why we worship. And at the end of the day, I felt like the gospel is best when it's communicated person to person. Discipleship happens person to person. We recognize that. We knew that we could do it in such a way that it's safe, certainly safer than any big box store with hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, and to see people here who are all taking a step of faith to get here. You know, each one has neighbors who think, what, you're gonna go to church? Uh, they've all seen the hate on, on the internet. They've all felt it from relatives and friends. And I think it was such a blessing to see people here who are willing to come to church, even though um, not everyone is patting you on the back on your way to church, they still would go. They were still willing to worship Jesus even if um, it cost them something. And I think that's true worship. We call it God has ordained for us to face this challenge together. And so there's a lot of beauty that comes with it. People are loving each other more openly. People are leaning on each other. Um, and, and, and it's okay to, 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 to admit that we need uh, the God's love through one another. And, and it's actually a very beautiful thing. Every time that our lives face a challenge, those are the times that we grow. And so, you know, for Christians, we, we're looking at this uh, time and we see our finances are tattered, our health might be concerning, our, we're concerned for our kids, maybe we're um, in one way or another stressed out by the presence of all the family being in the same room together all the time and you know there's a lot of these challenges that we're facing and uh, it's all t working together for good. I, I think that's what I'm uh, in my heart throughout all of these uh, challenging seven weeks it's been that God is going to use every aggravation that we're facing to give us an opportunity to cry out to God, to learn to lean on God more than we were before. And by the way, we'll always need this lesson again and again and again. And so this is something, though we all would face um, challenges in 2020, each one different, God has ordained for us to face this challenge together.